Let's speak about the basic science of photobiomodulation therapy, otherwise known as cold laser therapy. So what happens when we turn the laser on and you see the first bit of red light? The light is being absorbed by your skin specifically by the mitochondria and even more specifically than that if we look in the cell walls of the mitochondria this is an image of that we see all these different receptors specifically this photoreceptor called cytochrome c oxidase you may be thinking Michelle, why are you boring me with this intense detail i don't really understand i'm going to try to explain this to you in the best layman's terms as possible so you can understand exactly what is going on when the laser is being absorbed by your tissues. You can think of this cytochrome C oxidase as chlorophyll is to a cell. Most people are familiar with photosynthesis. It's when the light is absorbed by the chlorophyll in the leaf of the plant and the chlorophyll is what takes that light energy from the sun and transforms it into mechanical energy that it can use to repair and heal itself. Well, we respond the same exact way with red light and infrared light. So cytochrome C oxidase has two optimal absorption rates. As you can see in this image that I drew above of the different wavelengths, here you'll see the visible light spectrum. Cytochrome C oxidase has an absorption rate optimal for red light at 620 to 660 nanometers. That is why we first use the red. If we move a little bit over into the infrared, the cytochrome C oxidase is optimal for absorption at 820 to 850 nanometers. So that is why we use the two. And that is why when it transforms after, when the red light is completed, it will then beep again about halfway through the treatment and turn to that infrared setting that you cannot see. And it's because it's no longer in the visible spectrum. And just to kind of give you an idea of where we are here, we have radio wavelengths, microwaves, the infrareds, the visible light spectrum. Then we're after here, we're getting into the ultraviolet light, which is sun, x-rays, and then gamma rays, that type of thing, just to give you an idea of what this is. Now let's back up a little bit and now let's focus and hone in on cytochrome C oxidase. Why is that important to know? And what does this NO mean? It stands for nitric oxide that is that byproduct of inflammation that binds onto cytochrome C oxidase instead of oxygen. You may be thinking, well, if oxygen is supposed to be binded onto there in the first place, how come nitric oxide can then bind onto it so easily? That's because it has a higher copper concentration. So it binds easier on to cytochrome C oxidase. The problem is if it stays there because then the amount of ATP that should be produced by your cell, that's the energy of the cell that it can utilize to heal and repair itself, that isn't being produced. So what's happening is your cells are essentially suffocating because there's too much inflammation and nitric oxide suffocating the area. So when the laser is absorbed specifically, we know now by those two wavelengths, the red light and infrared light, it breaks down the hydrogen bonds and knocks out nitric oxide. And the cool part is the red blood cells are actually very attracted to the light. So blood flow and circulation is drawn to the area and the red blood cells, they are bringing in oxygen via the attachment of hemoglobin from the cell and gives the cytochrome C oxidase the oxygen so that ATP can be produced and all these amazing effects are being produced. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up to the top. Increasing bone formation is amazing for difficult to deal with fractures. This includes fractures that cannot be mended with a cast. So this is rib fractures, collarbone fractures, and fingers and toe fractures, as well as fractures that just simply aren't healing well or they're slow to heal. It will increase cartilage production, which is great for osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis anywhere in the body, most commonly the knees, hands, neck, back, and shoulders. Disc injuries are also healed successfully, such as herniations and disc bulges, and TMJ pain and dysfunction. A lot of people don't realize there's this little cartilage in the jaw joint, and this can also help to alleviate osteoarthritis in that joint as well. The laser will increase nerve regeneration. Post-surgical complications with nerve injuries, such as severing a nerve during cutting through tissue, can help to be healed with laser. 
stenosis of the spine, TOS, otherwise known as thoracic outlet syndrome, which is a burning, numbness, tingling sensation that can be felt down into the arm. Carpal tunnel, sciatica, Morton's neuroma in the foot, and it can also be very successful of helping for recovery for decreasing concussion symptoms, but also other symptoms of headaches and migraines. Since the laser helps to increase collagen production, this is great for softening existing scar tissue, meaning it will help to improve range of motion and improve flexibility. It helps to prevent future scar tissue development, rejuvenate skin by decreasing wrinkles and fine lines and certain types of skin discoloration, it will help to heal ligament sprains that you receive in the ankles, knees, backs, or whiplash in the neck, and even shoulder separations, as well as frozen shoulder. With the laser's ability to increase blood circulation, this makes it very successful to heal skin conditions such as eczema, psoriasis, and acne, wounds, and even to help with hair growth. Because the laser also helps decrease muscle atrophy and increase muscle regeneration, Muscle strains, a pulled muscle or sport injuries such as a pulled groin, hamstring, quad, or bicep tear, and even rotator cuff injuries heal very successfully. Tendonitis and tendinopathy such as plantar fasciitis, jumper's knees, or Osgood slatter, tennis or golfer's elbow, a clicking hip flexor, carpal tunnel, whiplash, or even protective spasm is also very successful with laser. Muscle knots and to maintain muscle after surgery or even during a cast application also helps to significantly decrease the loss of musculature. The ability of the laser to decrease inflammation means it's great for improving swelling, especially right after an injury or surgery. Getting laser right after surgery decreases the chance of getting an infection, blood clots, keloid scarring, scar tissue, decreased joint range of motion, decreased flexibility, and excessive pain. It's also successful in helping to deal with digestive issues like IBS, acne, gout, burns, cuts, sinusitis, and bursitis. I want to save the inflammation, reduction in inflammation and edema for last because this is the main thing the laser does. If you have pain, you have inflammation. And since the laser helps to decrease that inflammation and gets you through that first stage of healing, you can then go through the full healing cycle and actually heal whatever cellular damage that your body is undergoing. Inflammation is important, however, because it is the first stage of healing. The issue is we just don't want it to linger because when it lingers then we're prone to secondary complications of inflammation, such as decreased range of motion, prolonged pain, atrophying of the muscle, reduced strength, increase in amounts of scar tissue, which therefore would influence how much flexibility you have and adhesions within the fascia. All these things can be avoided or significantly avoided if getting the laser right away. And that's why it's so important to get laser right away, especially after you injure yourself because it speeds you through that first stage of healing, which is that inflammation stage. So you don't notice as many secondary complications. And that's why it speeds up healing so significantly. So let's speak a little bit more about what to expect. When we first apply the laser, as I mentioned, you're going to see the red light. As we speak, my tissue is absorbing the red light via the mitochondria, specifically that cytochrome C photoreceptor, which allows for that nitric oxide to be broken down via the hydrogen bond, so oxygen can then bind on, ATP is produced, and the whole healing process can take place at an accelerated rate. In a nutshell, if your friends and family are asking you what laser does, it gives your body the energy it needs to speed up the healing process where it was stuck before. Because if an injury lasts any longer than three months, now you know it's chronic. That means your body was stuck and wasn't successfully able to do what it should do. Really, ballparking on average, injuries should improve within eight weeks. If you're now surpassing that eight week mark, your body is having a hard time regulating itself, getting of that nitric oxide so that oxygen can bind on so the body can heal itself. After the red light, I want to show you what the infrared light would look and go to the next step. If you are getting the treatment yourself, it's going to beep halfway through and turn to this 
infrared light that you can't see. Again, that's because we're now out of the visible light spectrum and we're now operating at 820 to 850 nanometers, which you can't see because it's within that infrared light setting. Still, my cells are doing the same thing, right? Because the cytochrome C has those two optimal absorption rates, so it's still producing the same thing. However, the infrared light is actually able to get deeper into the tissues. So say, the red light going into the skin can stimulate up to that depth. The infrared light can stimulate even deeper. Because we want to try to get as much stimulation of the mitochondria as possible to stimulate as much ATP production as possible so that we can give as much energy to the surrounding cells as possible so that it can go through the healing phase. And now the last would be the infrared probe. This is where we're specifically targeting. You can see how concentrated that area is. How the laser here is spaced out is the super luminous diodes are concave. What this allows is it allows, if I show you, it allows dimple formation into the skin so that the light doesn't get reflected off the skin. Because if you just hold light here like that, up to 85% of the light gets reflected right off your skin. So it's very important with application that as much is pressing into the area as possible so that it can get absorbed as good as possible. After that red light and infrared light take place, we take this probe here and we concentrate specifically on the areas that you have the most discomfort with. Now what we do here with the light, instead of just applying a little bit, to get even deeper we actually press right into the tissues and taking out what's called the tissue slack so that it can be absorbed more. So I'll demonstrate that with this description. The infrared probe, because it's a more concentrated form of light, will get even deeper into the tissues. But what happens if I press the pen into the skin like I showed you? If we press into the skin so that we press all the way down here so now the probe is here, we're able to get even deeper into the tissues. And that's why we will be applying a little bit more of a force when we apply this light. Now, depending on the area, we want to apply, say, maybe four seconds onto the finger. But if we're getting into bigger, thicker areas like the hip or the lower back, we're going to be hanging around in one spot anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds so that you get the optimal absorption rate. Because what happens is as the light is actually being absorbed, it can kind of bounce around a little bit over here, right? And so it may take a little while for it to get down into the tissues. So that's why the deeper we need the light to be, the longer we have to hold it so that we accommodate that time that it takes to bounce around and explore and look for what it needs to look for. Now that you know what to expect in terms of the pad and the probe in terms of the red light and the infrared light and you know about the absorption and how deep it's going to go, because by the way it will go anywhere from 10 to 15 15 centimeters into the tissues. I want to tell you why we apply the amount of treatments that we apply. So usually we do our treatments in bulks of three at whatever frequency is deemed best for you based on the intensity of your injury or how long it's been going on for, how fresh it is, etc. Generally, rule of thumb is the more fresh the injury is, the more aggressive we want to be with the treatment at the beginning, anywhere from three days to seven to 10 days, again, depending, and then we go from there. What I'm doing is I'm looking for the intensity that works best with you. We all have different thumbprints. I'm different, you're different. What I respond best to with light therapy and medication, you might not respond best to. So we take the first three treatments to gauge how you respond. So with this chart right here, it demonstrates that. This bell curve represents 
how much people respond to the factory settings. So about 75% of people respond to the factory settings. That's why they're the factory settings that Meditech made because that is what they have the most success with on the million plus cases that they've treated with their technology. However, again, you may be different. You may need a little bit less because of your genetic makeup, or you may in fact need a little bit more because of your genetic makeup. After three, if you don't respond, we increase the intensity because we're trying to look for this optimal rate. So here's the other thing, because you may be thinking, well, just crank it, Nichelle. Crank it as much as you can. If, if this is giving me the energy I need to go through the healing process, then why not just put it up as much as you can? Well, here's the reason why we don't want to do that. And that can be explained with this graph right here. As we increase the intensity, it's improving, it's improving, it's improving, it's improving, but it will get to a point where if we surpass it, it will start to decrease and then completely drop off to the point you're not getting any benefit at all anymore. We are looking for that optimal intensity, which 75% of the people respond to at the base factory settings. However, you may be a part of the group that needs a little bit less to get the optimal reaction, or you may be a part of the group that needs a little bit more to get the optimal reaction. By the way, depending on the darkness of your skin, that will change how light is absorbed into your tissue. And that's because of the concentration of melatonin. Melatonin will absorb the light first. That's why if you have darker skin, we actually change the settings so that you have light for longer periods of time so that it can get absorbed into the tissues deep as it would somebody who has lighter skin. It also depends on your age. The younger you are, the more mitochondria you have in your cell, so you don't need as much of a length of time of laser. Compared to when you're older, you don't have as much mitochondria, so we actually increase the amount of time the laser will be on so that you can get the same benefit from the mitochondria that you do have to produce the amount of ATP that you would have 20 to 40 years ago. Please remember that everyone responds to laser differently. On average, people need 11.1 treatments to resolve their issues. However, one to 30 plus treatments may be needed depending on the severity of your injury or pain. After the first three laser sessions, we will promptly reassess to check on your level of progress. Areas of improvement include reduction in pain levels, increased range of motion, better sleeps at night so the pain is not waking you up, and reduced need for pain medication. Based on the above criteria, if no improvement or changes are noted, we will increase the intensity to accommodate your genetic makeup. As previously mentioned, in some cases, we have to lower the laser intensity. Signs of this are increased soreness within the area the laser was applied or stiffness felt in the area at focus. This does not mean the laser did damage, it simply created excess excitement within your cells or your body is adjusting to the cells in the area properly going through their cellular respiration, aka the healing process. If this occurs, Nichelle will make the decision to either lower the intensity or keep it the same. As the number of treatments are sustained, the laser will need to be increased because your cells will begin to adjust to that intensity. Similar to how we adjust to medication or alcohol, our bodies will adjust to laser and we will require a higher intensity so we can continue to improve. Treatment frequency will also lessen as the weeks go on. With inflammation decreasing, and the cellular damage reducing, the cells will require less stimulation to keep them on the right path to heal you to your maximal medical improvement. Our goal is to treat you with as few sessions as possible, but please be patient with us if your injury requires more than the average number of sessions because your cellular damage is greater than the average.